all of you know what is respiratory distress syndrome. So there is some distress, there is some extra effort while respiration, right? Now, that is happening in which age group? That is happening in neonates. So first of all, we shall uh, look out what are the other names for this neonatal respiratory distress syndrome and then we shall enter into the etiologist, okay? So this neonatal respiratory distress syndrome is also called as infant respiratory distress syndrome, okay? Infant respiratory distress syndrome. Respiratory distress syndrome. You know, from now onwards, what I'll do is that I'll just write it as RDS. RDS means respiratory distress syndrome. Okay? Now, why this neonatal respiratory distress syndrome is happening? We will, yes, don't worry. We will discuss everything point to point by concept. Okay? Why, why? Uh, in infants, there is respiratory distress syndrome is the main reason of this topic is surfactant deficiency. The entire topic is completely circling around this one word, surfactant deficiency. So that is why it is also called as surfactant deficiency respiratory syndrome. Surfactant deficiency disorder. Surfactant deficiency disorder. Okay? This is also called as surfactant deficiency disorder. Next important thing. Next important thing is that this is also given another name called as hyaline membrane disease. Abhi isko hyaline membrane disease kyu bolta hai? I will tell you when I will be teaching pathophysiology. Okay? So it is also called as hyaline membrane disease. Hyaline membrane disease. Okay? Now, this neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, if you basically look guys, most commonly you see this at an age group. I mean, you see in a preterm or a premature infant. Okay? So if a mother is giving birth to a premature infant or a preterm infant, so in those group of individuals, those group of children, you will basically see this kind of disorder. Okay? So if we start from the basics, normally all of you know that a baby is born somewhere between 37 to 42 weeks. You know? Baby is somewhere born between 37 to 42 weeks. Now, if we little bit decode this, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. Okay? Now, if the baby is born between 39 to 40 weeks, hai na, isko bolte hai full term pregnancy. Okay? Or this is also called as full term infant. Okay? So, actually you call it as full term infant. This is called as full term infant. Okay? Abhi 39 se pehle, 39 se pehle matab from 37 to 38 weeks, hai na? this is called as early because it came early. So, this is called as early term. This is called as early term. So, early ka opposite kya hoga? Late. If the baby is born after 40 weeks or before 42 weeks, this is called as late term. This is called as late term infant. Okay? Whatever it is, whatever it is, 37 le se lekar 41 tak, this is all the term part. Hai na? 37 se pehle, this is called as preterm. After 41, this is called as postterm. So, if a baby is born before 37 weeks of gestation, okay? if a baby is born before 37 weeks of gestation, you call this baby as a preterm baby. Okay? This is called as a preterm infant. So, preterm infant. Usually in this age group itself, right, these babies, these preterm babies are at a higher risk of developing this neonatal respiratory distress. Abhi 42 ke baad kya hoga? What is everything after 42? That is called as post term. That is called as post term baby or a post term infant. Post term infant. Okay? So now you understood the basic thing. The basic thing is, if any baby is born before 37 weeks, that is called as a preterm infant. Okay? Okay, 37 weeks ke pehle, right? 37 weeks ke pehle matlab, what is the exact age group? The exact time period is between 20 to 36 weeks. Okay, between 20 to 36 weeks, if a baby is born, right? This is called as a preterm infant. You're clear with that? So this is the first very important thing I want you to know. So, whenever I am telling neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, second word should come into your mind is surfactant deficiency. Third word you should come into your mind is preterm infant. Preterm matlab 20 se lekar 36 weeks ke andar delivery hua to, that infant is called as preterm infant. So, he is having a higher risk of developing neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Now, what we shall do is that we shall look at the etiologist. Okay? Ek ke baad ek. So, what we shall do is instead of writing the etiologist fastly here, 
etiologies right what we shall do is we shall discuss each and every etiology in detail okay so first etiology which comes which i already discussed ye hoga preterm infant or premature birth preterm infant or premature birth okay so preterm infant or premature birth now you might get a doubt that i mean, i hope all of you know this thing that why in premature infants between 20 to 36 weeks agar delivery hua why in these infants there is respiratory distress the reason is during this time right during this time of about 20 to 36 weeks kya hoga during this time the surfactant is not properly synthesized okay so all of you know this basic concept that for example if this is an alveoli okay alveoli ke andar kya hoga we have got alveolar cells you see all these are alveolar cells are also called as pneumocytes you know all of you know that these are called as pneumocytes now out of all these pneumocytes there are some special type of pneumocytes you know ye dekho ye orange mein mai jo draw kar raha na these are special type of pneumocytes called as type 2 pneumocytes what are they called these are called as very good type 2 pneumocytes okay type 2 pneumocytes what is the function of this type 2 pneumocytes these type 2 pneumocytes they synthesize or they release surfactant they release surfactant ye dekho this is how the surfactant is released okay this is how the surfactant is released now exactly speaking at which week surfactant release will start surfactant release will start at 20 weeks of gestation okay from 20 weeks all the way till 35 weeks what will happen is that surfactant keeps on releasing or jo bhi surfactant release hoga, that will spread along the entire alveoli so matlab lungs are completely mature or fully formed with surfactant by which age guys 35 weeks so 35 weeks ke baad agar delivery hua then the risk of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome will be less yes or no the risk of neonate developing respiratory distress will be less right why do we need surfactant? First of all, what is surfactant? See, basically, if this is your alveoli, okay, lining the alveoli, you basically have surfactant. Agar surfactant nahi hai, then what will happen is that the surface tension here will be increased. And this increased surface tension will pull the alveoli together and the alveoli will collapse like this. Okay, this collapse of alveoli is what is called as atelectasis. Okay, agar alveoli collapse nahi hona, then what we should do, we should reduce the, surfa uh, reduce the surface tension. Surface tension ko reduce karne ke liye, what we do is, we apply surfactant here. Clear? Right. So, during this time, if the delivery happens, the, play, the time when the surfactant is released or it is completely spreading all over the alveoli, then it would lead to respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. So, there is one uh, research guys, uh, New England Journal. So, in that, what they told is, Respiratory distress syndrome is inversely proportional to gestational age. Gestational age. Obviously, agar gestational age come hai, 20 weeks, right? Then the risk of respiratory distress will be more. If gestational age is more, matlab 38, 39 weeks, then the risk of respiratory distress syndrome will be less, obviously, right? So this is the base point which I want all of you to remember. So the first important thing, Premature or preterm infant. This is the first etiology. Now, let's see the second etiology. Dekhenge. What is the second one? Second important thing is maternal diabetes. Maternal diabetes. Maternal diabetes. Now, before I discuss maternal diabetes, one very important thing I want to tell you is that surfactant, right? Surfactant is mainly having three important components. Kya hai wo? Ek hai PG. One is called PC, one is called PI. All of you know PGI Chandigarh, right? So remember it as PGI Chandigarh, right? So one is PG, another one is called as PI, another one is called as PC, okay? So what is this PG? PG is also called as phosphatidyl glycerol. Phosphatidyl glycerol. Okay, and what is this PI called as phosphatidyl ionositol? Okay, PI is also called as phosphatidyl ionositol, and obviously PC is called as phosphatidyl choline. All of you know this thing, I think. 
फॉस्फोटिडाइल खोलिन ठीक है सो दीज आर द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेट्स ऑफ सर्फेक्टेंट नाउ आउट ऑफ दीज थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेट्स ये फॉस्फोटिडाइल कोलाइन जो है ना द अदर नेम फॉर दिस फॉस्फोटिडाइल कोलाइन द अदर नेम फॉर दिस इज लेसिथिन ठीक है the other name for this is lecithin so i hope guys you please keep on commenting down i hope you are understanding time to time whatever i am teaching here so these are the three important components of surfactant now why in maternal diabetes there is respiratory distress the reason is ye dekho for example mother is diabetic a pregnant woman is diabetic so in her blood the glucose levels are high listen carefully the glucose levels are high so these increased glucose levels through the placenta right through the placental vessels this increased glucose will be transferred to the fetus also matlab fetus ke andar bhi glucose levels badhega right now whenever there is increased levels of glucose in the fetus fetus ke andar pancreas is normal pancreas keeps on releasing excess amount of insulin obviously all of you know when glucose is there insulin will be released so right now within the fetus glucose levels are high right so because of that the insulin levels are also increased this insulin this increased insulin will inhibit pc pi and pg it will inhibit this phosphatidyl glycerol phosphatidyl inositol and phosphatidyl choline agar ye inhibit kiya will surfactant be formed surfactant is not formed and again surfactant deficiency leading to respiratory distress syndrome right so i hope all of you understood Uh, pilot signy very good lecithin sphingomyelin ratio i will tell you at the end in the diagnosis but you are right very good so this is the point which you have to remember side in the box so what i was telling is if there is if the maternally if maternal glucose levels are high right automatically this will affect on the fetus also so obviously the fetal glucose the blood glucose levels also will be high so whenever there is increased fetal blood glucose levels what will happen there is increased release of insulin and what is this insulin going to do this insulin will inhibit all these three important things okay so sachda good evening sachda so all of you understood so this is all you need to know regarding the maternal diabetes okay now after this the third important etiology we will discuss is hereditary hereditarily also there is deficiency of surfactant kaise okay so hereditary so what is hereditary factors hereditary factors matlab ye dekho surfactant ke andar not only phospholipids there are also proteins theek okay? hai i will tell you two proteins one is called as surfactant protein number b okay surfactant protein c ye do protein se what are these two surfactant protein b surfactant protein c so even we need proteins also right not only phospholipids agar ye proteins mutate ho gaya right if there is a mutation of these proteins what will happen do you think surfactant will be formed properly no so that is what is called as a hereditary factor okay so hereditary factor is if there is mutation mutation of which proteins mutation of spb and spc okay so abhi tak abhi tak right now we have discussed three important things okay so one we discussed is uh, premature infant or preterm infant aur dusra kya discuss kiya we discussed maternal diabetes aur teesra we discussed hereditary okay now fourth very important thing is c section or cesarean delivery so even cesarean deliveries are normally happening basically cesarean mostly in the private hospital cesarean deliveries only happen right in the government hospitals mostly uh the normal delivery is happen until and unless there is some kind of uh, emergency or complication they do cesarean okay so why in cesarean delivery the baby will be born will have a risk of respiratory distress yes cesarean delivery right before i explain the cesarean delivery one point you should know that steroids matlab glucocorticoids jo hai na glucocorticoids are responsible for the maturation of surfactant or glucocorticoids are responsible for the surfactant synthesis okay so what i am telling is gluco corticoids gluco corticoids jo hai they are responsible for the synthesis of surfactant gluco corticoids are responsible for the synthesis of surfactant Now, in cesarean normal delivery में क्या होगा पहले 
in normal delivery there are uterine contractions right there are uterine contractions now when there are uterine contractions the baby is under a heavy stress right the baby is under a heavy stress now within this baby there is a stress hormone that is released stress hormone kya hai? that is cortisol yes or no now this cortisol will cause what synthesis of surfactant agar cesarean section hua c section hua do you think in c section the baby is under a severe stress no we are just cutting down the lower abdominal cavity and then removing the baby out right so there is no proper stress so when there is no sufficient stress obviously within the baby also the stress hormone called as cortisol is not released agar cortisol release nahi hua to the lungs the the surfactant whatever is there they are properly not matured or not properly synthesized so this can be also one more reason to add up to our topic okay so let us write down whatever we have told okay so in cesarean section what is happening is that there is no stress there is no stress no stress matlab kya there are no uterine contractions there are no uterine contractions so whenever there are no uterine contractions then whenever there is no stress obviously no stress hormone is released no stress hormone is released so when the stress hormone is not released what is going to happen no synthesis of surfactant no synthesis of surfactant osama sheik already is telling that is why we give dexamethasone obviously glucocorticoids are responsible for the synthesis jab glucocorticoids nahi hai we give an injection of glucocorticoids so that the lungs become mature very good osama right so fourth ke baad fifth important finding what is the fifth important etiology is there is a condition okay tell me first of all what are the uh, serous cavities which you have guys we have got a pleural cavity We have got a peritoneal cavity, we have got a pericardial cavity. ये सारे serous cavities है ना? अगर ये serous cavities के अंदर, within the serous cavities, if there is excess amount of fluid, right? This condition is called as hydrops fetalis. Okay? So hydrops fetalis, hydrops fetalis also plays a very important role. So in hydrops fetalis, what is happening? There is fluid accumulation. ठीक है? there is fluid accumulation in the serous cavities fluid accumulation in the serous cavities serous cavities matlab in the lungs the fluid will be accumulated and this would lead to what pleural effusion pleural effusion so same effusion in the heart what is it called as pericardial effusion pericardial effusion and third important thing agar if there is excess amount of fluid in the peritoneal cavity that would lead to what ascites that would lead to what ascites right so the fifth important cause is we shall revise all these things at the end just listen to what i am telling the fifth important cause is hydrops fetalis okay now after this the sixth important thing the sixth important thing is multi fetal pregnancies multi fetal pregnancies अभी ये मल्टी फीटल प्रेगनेंसी क्या होगा मल्टी फीटल प्रेगनेंसी मतलब ए प्रेगनेंसी विथ मल्टीपल फीटस मोर देन वन फीटस इज कॉल्ड एज मल्टी फीटल प्रेगनेंसी ओके सो ऑब्वियसली यू कैन रिलेट इफ विद इन द प्रेगनेंसी इफ देर आर मोर फीटस विद इन द यूट्रेस मोर देन वन देर कैन बी चांसेस ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस राइट सो मल्टी फीटल प्रेगनेंसी मतलब इफ द प्रेगनेंसी विथ मोर देन वन फीटस okay so what will happen is that such pregnancy right such uh, women such pregnant women has a higher risk of giving birth to a premature infant okay so the risk of preterm infant is more the risk of preterm infant or premature infant is more okay and the final important cause which we will discuss now is the male sex is the male sex obviously basic thing you have to know compared to male lungs and the female lungs male lungs they mature lately okay there is a delay in maturation of male lungs in comparison with the female lungs so that is why this respiratory distress is most commonly seen in the male okay so you just have to know that male is has a delayed lung maturation than females delayed lung maturation than females okay so these are the seven factors guys okay kya hai wo seven factors 
फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस इज प्री टर्म इन्फेंट और प्री मेच्योर बर्थ ओके सेकेंड इज मेटरनल डायबिटीज इंसुलिन विल इनहिबिट ऑल द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स ओके उसके बाद आएगा हेरिडिटरी एंड आफ्टर दैट वी डिस्कस अबाउट सीजेरियन देन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट हाइड्रोक्सफिटालिस then we have discussed about multiple multi fetal pregnancies and finally the male sex so these are the seven important risk factors for respiratory distress syndrome now exactly is respiratory distress syndrome mein kya ho raha hai what is the pathophysiology okay so before i discuss pathophysiology what first thing you have to know is that you just have to look at the picture which i am drawing so all of you comment down did you understand all the etiology still here whatever i have explained you yeah before before i draw the picture you just keep on telling me so this alveoli whatever i'm drawing ye jo hai na this is called as a normal alveoli okay abhi collapsed alveoli kya hoga this is collapsed alveoli ye dekho alveoli is collapsed okay why because i told you normal alveoli is having surfactant collapsed alveoli is not having surfactant okay now all of you look here i am drawing one collapsed alveoli yahan pe so this is one collapsed alveoli actually this picture is showing that the alveoli is not collapsed but for you, to make you to understand this concept i have just inflated the alveoli okay but it is a collapsed alveoli let us also draw the heart over here now all of you know from your uh, right ventricle here you have got pulmonary artery now this pulmonary artery goes all the way like this right and here you have got your pulmonary capillaries okay and finally these are the pulmonary veins which are draining into your left atrium now based upon this we shall discuss first important thing agar alveoli collapse over do you think oxygen can enter into the alveoli first point no so oxygen cannot enter into the alveoli okay so we have got a collapsed alveoli in this collapsed alveoli oxygen is not entering and not only that all of you should know that we have got carbon dioxide here within the pulmonary capillaries can carbon dioxide enter into the alveoli no collapse ho gaya kahan se enter hoga no so oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusion is not at all taking place so oxygen carbon dioxide diffusion diffusion is not at all taking place okay now when oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusion is not at all taking place within the pulmonary capillaries if i ask you what is the status what will you tell level of oxygen batao pulmonary capillaries mein kam hai ki zyada hai oxygen is not coming inside so obviously the level of oxygen within the pulmonary capillaries is low level of carbon dioxide within the pulmonary capillaries is high right ab ye dekho if oxygen level is low within the pulmonary capillaries you call this condition as hypoxemia okay and if carbon dioxide level is high within the pulmonary capillaries you call this as hypercapnia hypercapnia okay so what will happen when there is hypoxemia and hypercapnia specifically speaking whenever there is hypoxemia hai na wahan pe blood vessels jo hai na they undergo vasoconstriction okay they undergo vasoconstriction kyunki yahan pe oxygen yahan pe oxygen supply karke koi fayda nahi hai there is no need of supplying blood here because the alveoli is collapsed it is not at all receiving so isse acha i will vasoconstrict and supply the remaining amount of blood to the alveoli which is healthy right so what is going to happen is that these alveoli they undergo vasoconstriction yahan pe you see the alveoli are undergoing vasoconstriction here right so whenever there is vasoconstriction here all of you look now see this is a vasoconstriction here also there is a vasoconstriction so this vasoconstriction is happening why because of hypoxemia this is called as hypoxic vasoconstriction so this phenomena is called as hypoxic vasoconstriction hypoxic vasoconstriction okay now because of this hypoxic vasoconstriction i hope all of you are with me all of you are understanding whatever i'm teaching hai na so because of this hypoxic vasoconstriction what is happening what is happening is that ye alveoli ye pulmonary capillaries hai na within this pulmonary capillaries the level of carbon dioxide is keeping on increasing 
when the level of carbon dioxide will increase this would lead to a condition called respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis obviously it would lead to a condition called as respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis this is the first important thing okay second important thing because of this hypoxic vasoconstriction because of this hypoxic vasoconstriction or because of this hypoxemia or hypercapnia what is happening is that ye alveocytes na pneumocytes right the permeability of this pneumocytes is increased matlab there are gaps in between the pneumocytes when there are gaps in between the pneumocytes the fluid which is located outside the alveoli hai na interstitial fluid jo na this fluid starts entering within the alveoli they start entering into the alveoli what is the consistency of this fluid this fluid is a protein rich fluid so there is a protein rich fluid that is entering into the alveoli ye dekho there are also proteins in between okay so this kind of exudate whatever is there within the alveoli right now is called as fibrinous exudate kyunki they are having rich amount of proteins okay so second important thing what is going to happen is fibrinous exudate fibrinous exudate After some time, क्या होगा? There is a there are a lot of fibrous materials है ना, fibrous exudate है ना, within the alveoli. These fibers, these proteins, they become hard and glassy appearance. Okay, hazy or glassy appearance. They become hard and they turn into a glass or a hazy appearance. So that is what is called as a hyaline membrane. इसीलिए इसको hyaline membrane disease बोलते हैं. Okay, that is why you called as hyaline membrane disease. So after some time, in the long run, what is going to happen is that the proteins whatever is there within this exudate they become hard and glassy hard and glassy so this hard and glassy layer formation jo bhi hai na this is called as hyaline membrane that is why you call it as hyaline membrane disease okay so i hope guys pathophysiology you understood only three points you need to remember first point is hypoxemia hypercapnia because of that the second point you have got is hypoxic vasoconstriction third point which you have got is respiratory acidosis and fourth important point which you have got is fibrinous exudate so these are the four important points which you have to remember okay very good now what we shall do what we shall do is that we shall look at the clinical features okay we shall look at the clinical features now in these clinical features what what do you know the lungs are completely right the fetal lungs if you look the fetal lungs are completely filled with the fluid now do you think the fetus can he breathe properly uh, sorry the the baby can can the baby can the new infant can he breathe properly no right so this is called as tachypnea okay along with tachypnea what is happening he is trying to take the air inside by contracting all his muscles intercostal muscles so you can very clearly see on the chest of a infant there are intercostal retractions okay intercostal retractions so from today onwards guys whenever you see these two important signs like tachypnea and intercostal retractions you should think that right now the patient is having an increased respiratory effort okay he is under a increased respiratory effort so first important symptom first important clinical feature we have is tachypnea intercostal retractions which means increased respiratory effort second important one second important one is that when the lungs are collapsed sufficient amount of oxygen is not reaching to the pulmonary capillaries so obviously this will end up having cyanosis cyanosis matlab baby's body will turn to blue color hai na that is why you called as blue cyanosis cyanosis hai na uh, previously guys i told you there are two types of cyanosis right or two types of asphyxia blue asphyxia white asphyxia okay if the oxygen levels initially are disrupted this would lead to blue asphyxia baby will turn to blue if the hypoxia is still continuing for a longer time from blue the baby color will change to pale okay that is called as pale asphyxia or white asphyxia okay so these things we have discussed in the previous classes right third important clinical feature third important clinical feature kya hoga third important clinical feature is there is expiratory grunting 
expiratory grunting now this is something that is very important to know guys why there is expiratory grunting is that this is our body's auto backup mechanism you can sell okay so what is this expiratory grunting is for example these these are the lungs okay so this is one alveoli which is normal abhi ek alveoli jo hai collapsed hai. okay just for picture sake for explanation sake what i'm drawing is i'm drawing this as a glottis so this is your ग्लॉटिस ओके छोटा सा ओपनिंग है नाउ राइट नाउ गाइस आवर मेन इंटेंशन इज वी वॉट एवर ये एलवीओलाई जो डिफ्लेट हुआ ना वी हैव टू इन्फ्लेट द एलवीओलाई इफ आई हैव टू इन्फ्लेट द एलवीओलाई आई शुड पुट इन मोर प्रेजर ऑफ एयर आई शुड पुट इन मोर पॉजिटिव प्रेजर है ना सो वॉट आई डू इज दैट वेन एवर आई टेक एयर इन साइड वॉट इज एपनिंग द एलवीओल आर एक्सपैंडिंग एट द सेम टाइम दिस ग्लॉटिस वॉट एवर इज देयर this glottis or glottal opening whatever is there even the glottal opening is also opening so what is happening excess amount of air is entering within my lungs abhi ye air kya karega this will try to inflate the lungs now when i am expiring the air you might think all this air might go out but in this condition what will happen is that most 80% of the air remains within the lungs only 20% is escaping out kaise the reason is what our body does is that our body will close this glottic opening okay so leaving a small narrow foramen you can see a small narrow opening through this narrow opening what will happen some amount of air will escape out but 80% of air will remain in the lungs so whenever the baby is taking the air inside every time extra amount of air is getting added up ye extra amount of air kya karega it is it will try to inflate the alveoli back to normal position okay so when the baby is exhaling the air outside through this very narrow opening there will be a sound that will be heard and that is what is called as grunting that is we call it as expiratory grunting grunting during expiration okay so this is one very important thing which you have to know now after these the clinical features are done first what what is the important thing we do first important thing what we do is that the diagnosis is x ray okay once if you look at an x ray here all of you look at an x ray and tell me that can you very clearly find respiratory distress here guys yes or no batao so we take an x ray all of you just comment yes or no you can find a respiratory distress here very clearly kaha yes राइट बेसिकली आई डोंट फाइंड एनी रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस बिकॉज दिस इज अ नॉर्मल एक्स रे ठीक है ये नॉर्मल एक्स रे है दिस इज अ नॉर्मल एक्स रे ओके नाउ कंपेयर दिस एक्स रे विद दिस वन नाउ लुक एट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द फर्स्ट एक्स रे हियर एंड द सेकेंड एक्स रे हियर राइट इफ यू लुक एट एक्स रे क्लियरली वेरी गुड वेरी गुड इफ यू लुक एट एन एक्स रे क्लियरली यू कैन सी ऑल दैट व्हाइट कलर हेजीनेस इन द लंग्स right so this is nothing but called as pulmonary edema why pulmonary edema i have told you in the pathophysiology okay or ye uh, some kind of dots like disturbances whatever you can see if i wanted to tell you in a lame language right dot like disturbances whatever you can see this is called as ground glass opacity ground glass opacities or ground glass densities ground glass opacities or ground glass densities i'll show you a next x ray also ye dekho yeah very good osama sheik is telling white out x ray very good it is a white out x ray only ye dekho now look at this in this x ray can you see some kind of disturbance haziness or there are some uh, dots and dots a lot of dots that are present within the x ray to speak in a simple language yes or no so this is what is called as your ground glass densities basically okay so you see you cannot see a proper lung here why because there is a lot of fluid build up in the lung which is interstitial pulmonary edema but i want to i want you to concentrate on one very important thing if you look in the x ray can you see a black color line here guys if it is not clear i'll show it to you in the next x ray ye dekho yahan pe right here can you see this black color line which is branching into two ye dekho here also can you see this black color line pata kya hai this is called as air bronchogram okay so what is this called as air bronchogram so this sign is called as air bronchogram sign okay why this air bronchogram this tells that the lung is under severe respiratory distress 
okay so in case of severe respiratory distress you would see this air bronchogram right yeah uh, saini very good you are you are perfectly right ye, there is also a rice tube that is inserted this tube whatever is there ye dekho thin white color line which is in the stomach right so this is the ng tube nasogastric tube or a rice tube ye dekho ye rice tube hai. very good very good finding saini very good okay right so first important diagnosis kya karunga what is the first important diagnosis i do x ray x ray mein what will i see ground glass opacities air bronchogram sign and pulmonary edema okay on both the lungs not only on one lung on both the lungs you see okay now le let us look at the second diagnostic feature second diagnostic feature pehla ho gaya x ray second diagnostic feature is blood gas analysis abhi aap log batao blood gas analysis matlab will you see respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis right you would see respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis right so deepu niranjan i hope you are understanding whatever i am telling you third important thing what is the third important thing is that sir only after delivery we will get to know that the baby is under respiratory distress or before the delivery i mean prenatally also can we get to know yes how do you know prenatally that the baby is having a risk of respiratory distress syndrome by taking a little bit of amniotic fluid and doing some tests okay so that is called as amniocentesis i will tell you what is that amnio synthesis you do amniocentesis for what for prenatal for prenatal testing of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome okay what is this amniocentesis what is what is this amniocentesis in this amniocentesis the first important thing you need to know is that within the surfactant we have got two important things i told you that uh, phosphatidyl choline you remember other name for phosphatidyl choline is lecithin hai na so within the surfactant we have got lecithin and within the surfactant we have got another lipid called as sphingomyelin hai na ye do cheeze hai if these two are more it means surfactant is more it means lungs are mature if these two are less it means surfactant is less surfactant is not formed and lungs are immature right so what i do is that i do a ratio lecithin sphingomyelin ratio lecithin sphingomyelin ratio okay so normally in you and me the lecithin sphingomyelin ratio right it should be more than 2 this will indicate mature lungs right this will indicate mature lungs right for example if the sphingomyelin ratio is less than 1.5 then this indicates immature lungs immature lungs clear right after this after this after this the second important thing uh, which you will see here is that see one very important thing what i do is i'll do a little bit experiment okay there is a small experiment which you do now what is this experiment is that for example i have taken this bottle i hope all of you can look at this bottle guys yes ab ye dekho within this bottle this white color thing whatever is there this is called as surfactant hai na ye surfactant hai now what i have done i have taken surfactant i have added surfactant here is surfactant ke andar i have also added ethanol ab ye dekho surfactant will produce foam that is why surfactant is called as foaming agent ethanol jo hai that is a non foaming agent or anti foaming agent that will reduce the foam theek hai abhi ek foaming agent called surfactant ek anti foaming agent called as ethanol both of them i have mixed in this mix karne ke baad main kya karunga i will shake this okay now when i shake this like this all of you can see a foam is formed right now i will put this bottle aside now what i will do is that i will look at this bottle now i'll calculate the time how much time it is taking for this foam from this point to get down till this point i will calculate that time and i'll make an analysis so this experiment whatever i have done in this experiment agar surfactant jyada hai then the foam will be more it will take a lot of time for the foam to get down if surfactant is less right the foam will be less and also it will take a fast time right or a very less time for this foam to get down i hope you understood right so this experiment whatever i have done this is called as foam stability index foam kitna stable hai right foam stability index 
फोम स्टेबिलिटी इंडेक्स ठीक है फोम स्टेबिलिटी इंडेक्स ऑलवेज इट शुड बी हाई अगर फोम स्टेबिलिटी इंडेक्स इज लेस देन जीरो पॉइंट फोर एट देन इट इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ वॉट इट इज सजेस्टिव ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस सिंड्रोम राइट एंड फाइनल इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग फाइनल इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज आई डू ए रेशियो बिटवीन द सर्फेक्टेंट एंड आलबुमिन लो सर्फेक्टेंट सो इन दिस पेशेंट आई विल फाइंड लो सर्फेक्टेंट आलबुमिन रेशियो लो सर्फेक्टेंट आलबुमिन रेशियो विल बी सीन इन दिस पेशेंट सो दिस इज ऑल द डायग्नोसिस गाइज You will start with the X-ray. उसके बाद blood gas analysis. उसके बाद amniocentesis. You will do before the delivery itself. Okay? If you are thinking that the baby is gonna be, uh, we are going to deliver a premature baby right now, then you better do amniocentesis, right? And uh, by doing this, you can get to know the risk of the respiratory distress. ठीक है? Right? What is the treatment which I do? So treatment is very very simple, guys. You have to inflate the alveoli. तो उसके लिए the Air which you are sending inside should be a positive pressure or a negative pressure. But obviously the air which you are sending inside should be positive pressure. So what you do is that you put a mask and send positive pressure. Now you have to send the positive pressure continuously, or you will take a break in between. No, you have to send the positive pressure continuously. That is why it is called as continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP. Okay. So you do a nasal CPAP along with that you put a peep. Peep of about three to eight centimeters of water. Okay, three to eight centimeters of water. Abhi ye peep kya hai? Peep matlab positive end expiratory pressure. Now all of you might think that when I'm taking air inside, my lungs are expanding, so my alveoli also will stretch out, so more oxygen is taken inside. Now when I'm exhaling, you might think that my lungs are constricting, so my alveoli also will collapse. No. even you are exhaling also there is some amount of air which is kept in the alveoli to keep the alveoli continuously open like this okay if this air is not there then the alveoli will collapse so this air whatever is there here to maintain this air what pressure i will send inside that pressure which i am sending inside is this is positive end expiratory pressure okay at the end of expiration i have to maintain some pressure within the alveoli to prevent the collapsing तो उसके लिए ये मैं प्रेशर मेंटेन कर रहा हूं दिस इज अराउंड थ्री टू एट नाउ रिमेंबर वन थिंग डोंट इंक्रीज द पीप फॉर मोर देन टेन मोर देन ट्वेल्व लाइक दैट इफ यू इंक्रीज व्हाट विल हैपन ये एलवेल के अंदर एयर ज्यादा हो जाएगा एंड एलवेल विल बर्स्ट आउट ओके सो नेशनल सी पैप विथ पीप ऑफ थ्री टू एट सेंटीमीटर्स ऑफ वॉटर आफ्टर दिस वॉट विल आई डू स्टिल स्टिल इफ देर इज रेस्पिरेटरी इनसफिशियंसी स्टिल इफ द सिम्टम्स आर देर स्टिल इफ द सैचुरेशन आर नॉट नॉर्मल राइट If if respiratory insufficiency is there, still if there is respiratory insufficiency, the second thing what I do is that I remove the mask and everything. Simply I put a tube into the trachea that is called as intubation. Okay, so I intubate the baby. After intubation, I'll send the air by mechanical ventilation. Mechanical ventilation. I send the air by mechanical ventilation okay how much amount of air will you send inside the target oxygen we should should keep is 90% not 100% okay never ever send 100% oxygen into the baby right into the neonate why because if you are sending 100% oxygen this is a toxic 100% oxygen is toxic this would lead to retinopathy okay what will it lead to retinopathy of prematurity isliye hum 100% oxygen nahi bhejte only we send 90% oxygen so the target oxygen which you should keep is target oxygen should be 90% only okay why because 100% oxygen jo hai 100% oxygen is toxic for neonates it is toxic for neonates toxicity matlab what toxicity retinopathy of prematurity it would lead to retinopathy of maturity so i hope all of you understood this okay so this is the first important thing what we do is ventilation ye pura ventilation hai okay all this is ventilation now after this ventilation the second important thing we do is that we we try to synthesize that surfactant okay surfactant ko synthesize karne ke liye what you need to do cortisol that is a steroids so what we do is that we give an im shot of beta methazone beta methazone 
we give an IM short of beta methazone. Okay. So when do you give this? You give this for about 48 hours. Okay. What do you do? What do you do is that either either you can give in 24 hours, 24 hours time frame, or you can give in 12, 12, 12, 12, right? 4 12, so 4 doses or 24, 24, 2, 2 doses. So in that time frame, you can give this. Okay. So this is all which you need to know regarding the important topic that is respiratory distress syndrome. Right. So this is all we discussed. I hope now you understood why surfactant deficiency would lead to this, why it is called as hyaline membrane disease, right? So any baby that is born between 20 to 36 weeks is called as a preterm. Guys, all of you understood this topic, whatever I've told you, right? 